Who do you do do? Oh! We need to do some science. Just sitting here eating my brownie. Alright. Today we're going to talk about molecular compounds. You've already studied that. We did a lab on covalent compounds. Same thing. What we're going to do is learn how to name them. I know you're excited. So, take a look at the worksheet. Uh, we're going to start out looking at model one and we're going to fill in the uh, boxes as we go. Hmm. Apparently, this did not do what it was supposed to do. Hold on for a moment. So, we're going to start putting the numbers of elements into the boxes. How many chlorines do we have? Please, feel free to play along. So that means you all go, one! How many fluorines? One! All right. How many chlorines in the second one? How many fluorines? Very good. How many carbons? How many oxygens? I can't hear you guys in the back. How many carbons? How many oxygens? How many chlorines? How many oxygens? Am I going too fast? Phosphorus. Chlorine. Mr. Miller, if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause it. Nitrogen and then oxygen. Now examine the molecular formulas and how are the different elements present shown? What are we doing that's different over here? All right, here we have chlorine monofluoride. So what do you suppose mono means? No, it doesn't mean kissing disease. We have chlorine pentafluoride. What do you suppose penta means? Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Dichlorine monoxide, phosphorus pentachloride, dinitrogen pentoxide. What do you notice? You notice prefixes that tell us how many of the um, atoms are in each of these molecules. Now, first of all, A says how many different elements are present. There are two elements in each compounds. So these are binary compounds. I have to think about how to spell that. Do the compounds contain metals with metals? Metals, <coughs> excuse me, nonmetals or nonmetals with nonmetals? Well, let's look. Fluorine, right side of the periodic table. Fluorine, right side of the periodic table. Both nonmetals. Both nonmetals. Both nonmetals. But blah, 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 blah. You've got the idea. All right. So they're non-metals and non-metals. Quick review. Do not do uh, molecular compounds or covalent compounds melt quickly or melt slowly? In other words, do they have a high melting point, meaning they melt slowly? Or do they have a low melting point, meaning they melt quickly? That's right. They melt quickly. They have low melting points. Just seeing if you remembered that. Based on your answer to B, what type of bonding must be involved? Well, if it's non-metal and non-metal, what do we know? It's covalent bonding. Find all the compounds in model one that have chlorine and fluorine in them. Why is the name chlorine fluoride not sufficient? Why can't we call this chlorine fluoride? Because this compound, chlorine pentafluoride, is very different from chlorine monofluoride. Okay, so we need to differentiate numbers of atoms. With ionic compounds, you've got the charges because they're transferring the electrons. So you're going to have iron 2 oxide or iron 3 oxide. But with covalent compounds, you can have different oxidation numbers, which refers to how tightly the electrons are holding on refers to electronegativity and how well they'll share. All right, assuming the name of the compounds gives a clue to molecular formula, predict how many atoms of these prefixes indicate. What do you think mono indicates? One, good. How about di? Two, good. How about penta? Five. Hopefully you all remember pentagram, pentagon, penta means five. 
All right, let's put our values in. Mono is 1, Di is 2, Tri is 3, Tetra is 4, Penta is 5, Hexa 6, Hepta 7, Octa 8, Nona 9, and Deca 10. Now take a moment to look over the rest of this model. What suffix do all the compounds in, in model 2 have in common? So what we're asking now is, what suffix is this? Seen that one before? Ide, right? Yes, we know Ide. Ide is the end of the other binary compounds, not with polyatomic ions. Oops. Carefully examine the names of compounds in model two. What pre when, a, when is a prefix not used in front of the name of an element? All right, all of these second ones have prefixes. But the first one, boron doesn't have a prefix. Sulfur doesn't have a prefix. Iodine doesn't. Nitrogen doesn't. But dinitrogen does. What's different about these four compared to dinitrogen? What's that you say? They all start with just one? You are correct. So you could call it monoboron, but that would be kind of redundant, so we just don't. You may drop the mono when it is the first... Um, First, if the first element in a binary compound has just one element, or one atom in it, you can drop the mono. Which element in nitrogen and oxygen would require a prefix? If we have nitrogen oxide, well, the oxygen would. So we would name him nitrogen monoxide because we can drop the mono for the first one, which is nitrogen. Number nine, find two compounds in model two that contain a subscript of four. List the formulas and names for those two compounds. All right, subscript of four. Well, here's N2O4, and here's P4O10. N2O4, P4O10. What are their names? Did you say dinitrogen? Tetroxide, I've got to move this guy, All right, sorry. Get him out of there. Dinitrogen, tetroxide, then you were right. Did you say for the second one, tetraphos? For us, decoxide. You probably said decaoxide, but you can actually drop that little a. What's the difference about spelling of the prefix of four? Well, this one was tetroxide, and this one is tetraphosphorus. That's because with the oxygen, we can drop the a at the end of some of these. We can drop the A at the end, uh, we can drop the O, so we don't say monooxide, we say monoxide. We do say dioxide, trioxide, but tetroxide, petroxide, hexoxide, hepta. So those A's, those pesky A's, and that O we get to drop. Okay? Next page. Find two compounds in model 2 that contain the prefix mono in their names. All right, two compounds with mono. Dichlorine monoxide and chlorine monofluoride. So dichlorine, Cl2, monoxide, and I've already forgotten the other one, chlorine monofluoride, which would be Cl monofluoride. F. List the formulas. I'm not going to write the name. You already know the name. You can write it if you want to. What is the difference about the spelling of the prefix meaning one in these two names? Well, dichlorine monoxide versus monofluoride, which I just explained to you. So you're good. Identify any remaining names of compounds in model two where the prefixes that do not exactly match the spelling shown in the prefix table. So let's write a guideline for how to modify a prefix. 
basically if it starts with oxygen you drop the A or O and if it's mono is the first element we drop it. Would the guy line you wrote in question 12 give you the correct name for nitrogen triiodide as it is given in model 2? Let's see. Nitrogen triiodide. Right here. Triiodide. Hopefully you didn't say triodide. Okay. We don't drop that I. All the compounds listed in Model 2 are binary compounds. Compounds such as CH3OH or PF2Cl3 are not binary, and compounds such as NaCl and CaCl2 are not molecular. What does that mean? They're not molecular. That's right. They're ionic. Right here, those guys. Propose a definition for binary molecular compounds. Hopefully, you're sitting there going, okay, well, they're made of two elements only, and both of those elements are non-metals. All right, we're going to pause the video or stop the video, and we'll put, go on to part two. I want you guys to write a list of rules with your uh, seatmates. Okay, take five minutes, and then in five minutes, we'll come back.